have you with us on Publicity, a public information show that keeps you up to date on what's going on with your Winchester City government, events, and programs. I'm Barry Lee, and on this episode, we look at two major issues that are in the news right now. The spotted lanternfly, that'll be on the second half, and right now, the recycling concerns and issues right here in Winchester in our community. Michael Neese, Refuse and Recycling Coordinator for the City of Winchester, good to have you back with us. You know, we all grew up, Michael, learning to help Mother Earth by recycling, and now we're being told, like, well, wait a minute, we may not be able to recycle certain things. Sort of give us a background of where we are now, and then we'll talk about what's going to be going on this summer. Sure. So recycling is something good that we do for the environment, but it's also a commodities market. And when those markets get overwhelmed with demand, or if they have contaminated supplies, then they start reducing what they're accepting. So currently, well, in the past, in the last year, we used to be picking up glass for recycling. Um, there was a very low commodities market for that at that time, but we continued to take it because it was the right thing to do. Okay. And our material reclamation facility, where we were going to have the material separated out, tried and tried to find more markets, more venues, more vendors that he could take the glass to. And it came to a point where he just couldn't process it anymore. He had nowhere for it to go. What we like to say is, we can only put on the truck what we can get off the truck. Aha, uh aha. -huh, uh -huh. And this has global implications because a lot of our recyclables went to other countries, right? Yes. Uh, China in particular is in the news, but Malaysia, Indonesia, and a few others. So, what are the options that we have now? I mean, I understand that, uh, what, coming up in July, that even things like, I mean, we know that glass is a no-no now, but uh, even things like aluminum and paper, right? Yes, and while there's still markets for those individual streams, uh, in Winchester we collect dual stream. One truck comes by for bottles and cans, one comes by for paper and cardboard. So starting in July, the processing for bottles and cans is going to go away. The vendor's not going to be able to accept those materials. Hmm. So, wow, Michael, what kind of, uh, what kind of options do we have? Uh, not a lot. So we can either reduce the materials we collect, or we can try and collect them in separate streams. Now, uh, anything we collect needs to be separated to be recycled. Okay. Uh, the plastic bottle place doesn't want glass. You know, the glass place doesn't want aluminum. The steel place doesn't want tin, et cetera, et cetera. Paper place doesn't want cardboard. They each are specific to their material stream. So if we collect them mixed together, it's a good convenience for the city, and it reduces us having to run seven trucks on diesel all across the city. But then we need to pay someone to separate it out and market those materials. So one of the options would be to put it all together in one single stream recycling and then transfer it to a new vendor, a new material reclamation facility for a greater cost because there's a lot more separation involved. And then the other option that we discussed was not collecting recycling at all. And a third option we're pursuing but is difficult is trying to get all the materials separated and not have to go to a material reclamation facility and just directly market what we collect. So the first option, people are going to have to come up with uh, helping to support that cost, right? Uh, yes. Uh, when we went about our budget process for this year, we were not looking to switch a vendor. Uh, we were not looking to drive an additional 50 miles to go to that vendor. So it would be an increased cost for that. And option two, not real good because it all ends up in the landfill. Yes. Wow. So there's a survey that's going on right now. What's that all about? We're trying to get as much input as we can from the public, from the community that we serve, to please let us know what your preference is. Is this a program, a service that you're willing to invest more money in, or is it one that you're not? I mean, we're a taxpayer-run uh, business. We're not a private company. So we ask our customers what they would prefer. Okay. Now, that doesn't mean that what your vote comes to will be the exact answer, but it will be something that's considered. And if you have additional comments, questions, suggestions, on that survey is an email that will come directly to me. Please fill that in as well. And Michael, I know you and the staff, uh, I mean, you're trying to come up with some ideas outside the box, so uh, still trying to keep some options open, even though it's a n narrowing number of options, but uh, still looking at how, how we could possibly recycle these things. But there's something that we can do in the meantime. You said it, uh, at the very opening that we can reduce what we use. So let's go over some of the ways that we can, as citizens, 
uh, cut down on what goes into the landfill and how we can uh, become better eco-friendly here. Yes, and our little chasing arrow symbol that you see on all recyclable materials, that's to represent the three R's. Recycling has always been the third of those R's. So first, we reduce the amount of waste that we're generating. And secondly, we reuse as many items as possible. And then third, we recycle what's left. So if we start from the bottom, okay. recycling what's left, if you know which items you can recycle, then those are items that you still should reduce because we don't need to generate a lot of waste. Right, right. But you don't have to replace them. Then you look at the other materials that are in your trash can and your waste stream, and you have to decide which ones you can replace, which ones you can uh, reuse, and hopefully eliminate. Yeah. Some of these tips, I mean, basic stuff, but we can all do it. Uh, like stop buying plastic water bottles. I mean, you can use the metal uh, bottles and put your water in that. Uh, stop using disposable everything, uh, canceling unnecessary mail, <laughs> yes. uh, learning how to repair rather than discard, start composting, uh, relying on reusable containers, making a meal plan. It's unbelievable. When you order out or do takeout, all the waste that's involved with that. Also on that one is for your grocery shopping. Uh, yep. The majority of our waste stream is comprised of food waste. Uh, that's across the United States. We're buying food and then waiting for it to rot in our fridge and we throw it away. Yeah. It's a waste of food. It's a waste of space in our landfill. It, it's a waste all the way around. So if you go to the grocery store, go with a list. And that list should reflect what you're planning on making that week, two weeks, however long the grocery run is for. Yeah, and if you can use uh, you know, the, the, the grocery bags that are reusable instead of relying on that plastic, mm -hmm. um, Wow, so we're still hopeful. There's, there's a narrow list of options available to us, but you guys are still working on it. Yes, and we'll continue to do so. I, this isn't something that ever really goes away. Markets fluctuate. Uh, in times that we can expand our materials, we expand them. In times we have to shrink, we shrink. But it's an ongoing process until we find a different way to manage waste. All right. All right. Michael Neese, thank you so very, very much. Appreciate what you and the staff are doing. All right. Another concern. It's a little fly, the spotted lantern fly. Why is it of a concern here to us locally? We'll find out next on Publicity. Have a question about City of Winchester services? Ask CityBot. Need to submit a service request to City 311 like a streetlight out, pothole, missed trash collection, and more? Text CityBot. There are many ways the friendly Winchester City Bot can help. Just text HELLO to 540-701-3311 and City Bot will help you submit a service request or find the information you want using your smartphone or tablet. When you need it, the City of Winchester City Bot is here to help. Text HELLO to get started. Welcome back to Publicity. So, Spotted lanternfly. You're starting to hear more and more about it. And here to tell us all about spotted lanternfly in our area, Jen Jenkins, who is arborist with the city of Winchester. It's good to see you again. It's good to see you. So what is this spotted lanternfly? Well, the spotted lanternfly is unfortunately an additional exotic invasive insect pest that has shown up in our area. Uh, was first detected in Frederick County back in January of 2018. Um, they're dealing with this issue up in Pennsylvania and Delaware and New Jersey. So unfortunately we are as well. So, uh, you know, uh, you'll see a lot of pictures of this bug. A lot of people think that it looks a lot like a moth or a butterfly. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, it's known uh, as a type of insect called a plant hopper, and it actually sucks out the fluids of plants from the leaves and the stems, so it uh, can do a lot of damage to our, to our trees and some ornamental Where does plants. it come from? China. It comes from China, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, and so right now we have no native predators to help keep the populations in check. And they come in big swarms, right? I mean, they do, they can. Their feeding activities can, can um, create uh, sort of a public nuisance if you're a property owner and you have uh, outdoor furniture, decking material, vehicles, uh, their high numbers uh, can create quite of an issue. They have a digestive byproduct known as honeydew that is a sticky substance, very difficult to get off of surfaces. Also attracts sooty mold 
uh, which is a black fungus. And if you are an orchard or a vineyard owner, uh, if you get sooty mold on, on your crops, then they're pretty much unmarketable. Mm. So. Wow. Now, I understand that the uh, spotted lanternfly, that it's natural host, uh, it likes to, to uh, land on the tree of heaven, which is also a, a tree that's not native here. And we're thinking, oh, good. But there's so many of these things that they like to eat more than just tree of heaven. They do. They have a wide host range, which makes control very difficult. But they are thinking that it is t closely tied to tree of heaven during its adult stage or the last um, instar, which is this bright red stage. And so they're thinking that at those two phases, the insect needs to return to tree of heaven. And that's really where the, um, the treatment program comes into play. And so they're aiming at reducing their numbers and stopping the spread by by uh, catching them or, and either eliminating the tree of heaven or killing the bugs when they feed on the tree of heaven. So naturally, this is going to be a concern. I mean, we've got apple orchards, peach orchards, I mean, you yes. know, ornamental trees. Uh, this is something to be really concerned about. It is, and it's a community effort. You know, it's going to take all of us participating. The USDA is conducting the treatment program, and they've reached out to almost 6,000 uh, property owners this year. And so I would encourage folks that if they get contacted, uh, if they see some letters pop up on their doorstep from USDA or Davie Resource Group, that, uh, that they follow up with that and they participate. The city of Winchester is participating in both the treatment program and the quarantine. Um, all city-owned properties have been approved for, um, for inventory and treatment if necessary, and we've completed treatments in two city parks, Park Place and Jim Barnett. Uh, so we're, we're awaiting future treatments. Yeah, so maybe a, a few more words about quarantine yes. and treatment. Sure. So VDAX, um, they, they initiated the quarantine earlier this month. And so this is really important if you are a business owner and you export a product outside of Frederick County or the city of Winchester, you need to obtain a permit and you need to train your staff to look at the items that you will be exporting uh, if, you have, if you're exporting an item that is stored outside. So mm -hmm. we're talking stone, um, plant materials, um, outdoor equipment, furniture, and, and actually when you get down to it, even your vehicles, uh, they need to be inspected. And so it's a really simple process. It takes very little time to actually do the training and, and obtain the permit. And you would just do a walk around like you would uh, typically for your CDL walk around. And you're just gonna look for the egg masses or um, the adults or even the nymphs. Okay, and as far as uh, the treatment goes, uh, what's involved there? So the treatment project is free uh, and it's really targeted again at, at eliminating small tree of heaven, which is known to, you know, have that close association with the spotted lantern fly. Okay. And then the larger trees, the larger tree of heaven, are actually treated with a systemic insecticide so that when this, this bright red phase or the adults show up to feed on the leaves, it kills the, that insect. Uh -huh. If we want more information, Jen, uh, what's a good source to go to? So I'm highly recommending folks to do a general search for Spotted Lanternfly Virginia. And the first thing that pops up is going to be Virginia Cooperative Extension website. That's going to be a one-stop shop for all the information you need. It's good local information. Uh, and it, you also have find links there for the, uh, the quarantine as well as treatment uh, options and best management practices, both from the VDAC site and the USDA website. Excellent. Jen Jenkins, Arborist with the City of Winchester. Thank you very much. Most informative. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks a lot for joining us on Publicity. We'll see you next time.